In this video, let's talk about Mahomes somehow continuing to recover at a rather rapid pace, special teams coordinator Dave Tobe confirming that the Bengals threw off their plans regarding Chris Lammons, and look at the recent quote-unquote drama from Willie Gay Jr. as he gave a one-word answer to the media today. But first, how about those? All right, let's get right into this, starting with the most recent injury report for Thursday's practice leading up to the AFC Championship game. For the Bengals, you have right guard Alex Kappa and left tackle Jonah Williams. They both have not participated all week and both are starting linemen for the team and could possibly not play on Sunday. And if that happens, that's a tough loss for the Bengals in their line, and the Chiefs will need to try and take advantage of that via the D-line, please, please God. God. And then linebacker Joe Batchy, foot has been limited all week. Cornerback Trey Flowers hamstring and defensive end Sam Hubbard. They were both a full go today after being limited yesterday. Then you have center Ted Karras Karras knee has fully participated all week and then a new addition to the injury report. Ding, ding, ding. Tight end Hayden Hurst. You know the guy who uh, Justin Reed was attempting to talk trash about or smack about rather prior to the last game. The guy with the nice hair, that guy. Uh, yeah, he was added to the injury report today with a calf injury, and this is not his first rodeo with a calf injury. He missed three games earlier in the season, and he possibly tweaked the same calf, though it is unknown at the moment which calf it is. When I find out, I'll let you know, because we are all about watching basically ankle and calf area all this week. And for the Chiefs, the injury report from today matches yesterday. McCole Hardman pelvis was limited both Wednesday and Thursday. Meanwhile, Willie Gay, toe, Patrick Mahomes, ankle, and Jarek McKinnon, ankle as well, that little copycat, are on the injury report, but they fully participated Wednesday and Thursday. And with McCole Hardman being limited for the second day in a row, here's what Coach Reed had to say about him today in his presser. Yeah, I'm going to just take it day by day. And see, he's busting his tail, and his want is, I mean, he wants to be in there going, but I think it's important that we just keep keep him coming. And so he did that He did that yesterday, and we'll just see how, how it rolls. Yay, day by day. I love that so much. It's my favorite term I've probably ever heard since being birthed out of my mother. Anyway, on the subject of Patrick Mahomes, we are about to start today's segment officially titled Ankle Watch, where we scrutinize updates on Mahomes' ankle to the utmost of our abilities. But first, I have a huge announcement for you guys, one that I'm very proud of. I officially have my own freaking coffee. That's right. I've partnered up with the Closet Chiefs fan, Brandon Perna himself of That's Good Sports and his coffee company, Benchwarmer Brew, and this blend is simply called How About That Coffee, or the HBTC blend for sure, and it is the only medium blend that is sure to score a touchdown this season, brewed from freshly roasted and ethically stored beans. The sweet chocolate and bright citrus notes will be the MVP of your coffee rotation. Trust me, I'm basically a coffee chemist making pour overs every single day in my kitchen, and it is good. I would show you a bag, but I'm out and had to order more. And if you'd like to try a bag of your own, just go to coffee.hbtchiefs.com and grab yours today. All right, back to our regularly scheduled program, Ankle Watch. First up, Mahomes' x-ray results were recently revealed to the public, and while the x-ray results were clean as far as any breaks or fractures were concerned, they did find something concerning in that x-ray, and here it is. Not only does Mahomes' ankle got that dog in him, it also has Patrick Mahomes' hair, on the dog's head, which honestly makes this x-ray even more believable. Seriously though, here is what Coach Reed and Mahomes had to say today about his ankle and how he's doing, feeling, progressing, etc. He's doing well. He's doing well in rehab. He did well on the field. Felt good today, so did the walkthrough. He's on track. For the most part, we're doing the same things uh, that we would normally do. Yeah, I thought I had a good day yesterday. Um, obviously, it's things you had to work through here and there. Um, but overall, uh, probably better than I expected, being able to go out there and, and throw the football around and get the reps in that I needed to get in. You're not going to be able to prepare yourself 100% for the game, but you can do the best you can of putting yourself in those positions. And then uh, hopefully by the end of the week, you're in a, even a better spot that you can go out there and do what you need to do to win. I think progressively, I've gotten better throughout the week. Um, and I'm just going to try to keep doing that, keep that same uh, mentality and uh, uh, push it, but then at the same time be ready to go uh, whenever the game, the game comes up. And I think that's the key. Patrick says he feels like he's getting progressively better each and every day, and each day he gets treatment on the ankle prior to practice. 
after practice, then does some rehab on it, goes home, then has some treatment devices to use on it before bed, then wakes up and does it all over again. So he's definitely doing all that he can to get better and he certainly looks better today and here's proof. You can see him here walking away from the podium looking normal, nice steps. Here's a clip of him standing up using his right leg at practice, which isn't the most sturdy, but Maybe it's because his foot is wrapped up like a freaking mummy. Actually, both of them are. And then in this clip, he gives us a little skip and then levels up with a lethal spin move, which is a definite upgrade from yesterday. And then you can also see him handing the ball off from under center, which is seemingly done without much effort or pain or limp, whatever you want to call it. And that's a noticeable improvement because in the game, Mahomes was not really able to do this. He was hopping on one leg to even hand the ball off. And while this is only practice, hopefully it's a great sign of things to come in his healing slash recovery process. And Mahomes was asked about if he's seen people scrutinizing the way he walks and the way he's been practicing. And uh, this is what he had to say. Yeah, I mean, no one knows unless they get the guy actually put their hands on it and see it. But all I can do is just prepare my body the best way possible. I mean, I've seen the videos and everything like that of me walking. I don't know what you can really get from me walking. I think people will see on Sunday where I'm at and I'll see on Sunday where I'm at. I'm just going to uh, prepare my body the best way during the week to be in the best position possible. Yeah, we're not really sure what watching you walk is going to do either, but we're trying our best here to figure out if you're going to be okay. Mahomes credited the Chiefs training staff for the training he does regularly to strengthen his body to hopefully prevent injury and he also credited Bobby Stroop the freaking magician himself. You can't prevent all injuries, um, but you can be, you can prepare your body the best way possible so that whenever stuff like this last game happens, you're able to bounce back quickly. And so we've done a lot of ankle and knee and, and foot stuff, especially after my last few injuries I've had. Um, and I think that's prepared me to bounce back quickly here and uh, be able to be in a good spot that hopefully I'm able to go out there and give 100% during the game. So all in all, he's recovering well. And while he still probably won't be 100% on Sunday, the progress he's made is encouraging. And then remember the video I made the other day on the Bengals basically blocking the Chiefs from re-signing cornerback Chris Lammons to the practice squad by claiming him off of waivers after the Chiefs waived him from the 53-man roster. I basically said the plan for the Chiefs was more than likely to re-sign him to the practice to squad and elevate Lamons on game day. Well, today in his presser, special teams coordinator Dave Tobe confirmed that Brett Veach's plan was to basically do just that, and the Bengals prevented it from happening. Yeah, I mean, it, it happens. I mean, uh, you know, Veach, Veach had a plan. You know, he had a plan. Um, you know, he always has a plan. He's a smart guy. Uh, it just didn't didn't work out, I guess, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately for Lamons, you know, because now he's not going to be able to play. It's just the way it goes. Uh, you know, obviously he was a good player for us and, you know, for three years, um, did a lot for us and I want to thank him for that. So yeah, while what the Bengals did was completely legal and within their rights, um, it's semi petty and a bummer for Lamons who now won't get to play in the AFC championship game and will more than likely be released by the Bengals the day after the Super Bowl. But it was a calculated risks that the Chiefs took and didn't go according to plan. So they did nothing illegal, tip of the cap to them. It is what it is. Another plan that the Chiefs are normally pretty good at following is responding to the media in a way that doesn't give opposing teams a lot of bullets and board material. That's not Coach Reed's MO, and that's not how he likes his players to roll either. For example, the whole Justin Reed drama prior to the first matchup with the Bengals in Week 13, Andy Reed was not a fan and made sure that this go-around, Justin Reed said this when asked about it. Yeah, I think we all saw it, and you know, those guys are having fun since they won the game. Um, but we're gonna just let our play on the field speak for us and you know we're not gonna get into any Joseph messages with them. And yeah, the Bengals, they're coming into Arrowhead doing a lot of talking, which honestly, I don't know, they have every right to do it considering they beat the Chiefs one, two, three times in a row in the same freaking calendar year and are the defending AFC champions. But here's a funny one, cornerback Mike Hilton called Arrowhead, Burrowhead. We'll see y'all in Burrowhead. And now even their goofy cornball of a mayor is calling it that. On Saturday morning, I'll be arriving in Kansas City, so I'll be at the game at Burrowhead Stadium. See what I did there? No? No? Okay. I love that. So cringe, bro. The crowd didn't even know what he was talking about. It didn't land. You suck. Honestly, though, it's not that big a deal. I think uh, Hilton was just trolling around with that comment because I'm not really sure how winning at Arrowhead one time means all that much in the grand scheme of life. But again, everybody bit on it and reporters were even asking Chiefs players about it, including the subject of today, Willie Gay Jr. Uh, I'm just excited to be playing football, man. That's the, 
just what comes with the game, you know. Uh, we, like Coach Reed said, we don't do no talking. We just go handle business when it's time to go. So, hey, nice response, Willie. Don't talk. Don't feed on it and just go out there and handle business, right? Not so fast because things take a bit of a turn with the very next question. What is it about that Bengals offense that maybe impresses you the most? You played Nothing. it a few times? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> what impresses you most about the Bengals offense? Nothing. I mean, it is pretty funny, but I think it's getting taken a bit out of context here. The question was, what impresses you the most? about the Bengals offense, not does the Bengals offense impress you at all? So I think this is a bit of a non-story here. I mean, could Willie have answered that a bit better? Yeah, I do think so, but either way, the media blew it up and it's getting talked about everywhere now. And even Jamar Chase and some other guy responded to what Willie Gay said. Willie, the linebacker, yeah. What's your reaction to that? I ain't got no response to him, we gonna get him. I got no response. They're going to say what they're going to say. We're going to go out there and play. That's what we got to do. So there you go. The story that isn't much of one. I mean, anyone with eyeballs uh, or that has even a brain the size of a squirrel can see that the Bengals offense is indeed impressive. Joe Burrow is probably the second best QB in the league outside of Mahomes, and he's got an incredible wide receiver trio to throw the ball to. And then you got P. Ryan and Mixon in the backfield. No joke in the run game. I mean, P. Ryan, who I think on the depth chart, is the backup running back. Remember, he stiff-armed Justin Reed to the ground and bounced his head off of the field. So those guys are great, no joke, nice offense. But I think the one question mark I do have for the Bengals offense is their O-line and how beat up it is at the moment. Like, can the Chiefs defense that was second in QB pressures only behind the Cowboys and also led the league in QB hits, please get to Joe Burrow. That man is a slithering little serpent in the pocket and seems almost untouchable when facing pressure against Kansas City. So I definitely would like to see that change. Please and thank you. And then just to see the players continue to put their head down and look ahead to this game. Mahomes says different guys use trash talk in different ways, but his goal is just to go out there and play the best football possible because... If you're not fired up to play a team that's beat you three times in a row in the AFC Championship game, uh, then you're not going to be fired up for any game. So uh, I'm excited to play up against a great football team and try to do my best effort to, to go out there and get a win. That's right. You don't need anything said by anyone to be fired up to go out there and try to win this game. A team has beat you three times in the same calendar year, and they're coming back on your home turf in an AFC Championship rematch like last year. All three games also have been winnable for Kansas City. They've all been three-point games, and you know that Mahomes and company want to get this W in order to get that monkey off their back, and then Mahomes wants to go to his third Super Bowl in only five years as a starter, even if he has to do it on one leg. And in order to do that, I think defensive coordinator Spagnolia has the best statement on what they are going to need to do in order to get the W. I mean, our, our young guys are growing. Hopefully we've grown enough that we can match what they're going to put out there. This is an elite group we're going against. We've got to have an elite game. We've got to play our best game of the year for, you know, for our team to have a chance. But we're excited about the challenge. I mean, there isn't one guy in there in the defensive locker room that isn't excited to do it. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. If the Chiefs wanna win this game, they've gotta play their best game of the year in order to secure the win and break the losing streak. And there's a few other key things that we'll talk about in tomorrow's video. But with that being said, what do you guys think about Mahomes' rapid alien-like ankle recovery? Or what about Burrowhead? Willie Gay Jr.'s response and the like, is it nothing? or? Is there something to it? Let me know in the comments down below. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. Buy some coffee. How about those? Yeah.